ruling over the continent of Westeros for nearly 300 years. House Targaryen were the heirs of a legacy dating back to the Age of Valyria, when mighty dragon lords conquered nearly all of Essos, west of the Bone Mountains. As a result of this ancestry and the tradition of marrying within their own family, the children of House Targaryen often shared a number of physical traits such as pale skin, silver gold hair, purple eyes, and a resistance to heat, though they were not immune to fire. Some even possessed the ability to bond with dragons or could see glimpses of the future through prophetic visions. Though the Valyrian dragon lords and their descendants conquered much of the known world, legends say they began as simple sheep herders in the Valyrian Peninsula who discovered dragons living near the chain of volcanoes they called the Fourteen Flames. Over time they bonded with the creatures and became skilled in the magical arts, founding the Valyrian Freehold to be ruled by the forty wealthiest and most influential families. Considered a minor house among these aristocratic elite, the Targaryens gained a reputation for cowardice in 126 BC when they suddenly sold all their property and moved their people, slaves, and dragons west. However, the truth was that Daenys the Dreamer, the daughter of their patriarch, had a vision foreseeing a great tragedy that would destroy the Valyrian Peninsula. Trusting her prophecy, N.R. Targaryen moved his entire household to the far western island of Dragonstone, and as a result, they were the only ruling family to survive the Doom of Valyria, which struck 12 years later in 114 BC. Although the exact origin of the tragic event is not known, it was believed the 14 flames erupted, destroying their cities and the peninsula. Following the Doom, Essos descended into a period of chaos and war known as the Century of Blood, with the now independent cities of the former Freehold struggling against each other for supremacy, while Dothraki horse lords ravaged central Essos. Meanwhile, on Dragonstone, the Targaryens and their five dragons survived, as did their allies in House Valerion of Driftmark and House Celtigar of Claw Isle, both of Valyrian ancestry, working together to become a major power in the Narrow Sea, controlling trade with the threat of Dragonfire. But they did not attempt to reconquer the lands of Old Valyria, instead focusing on prospering as Lords of Dragonstone. After the death of N.R. Targaryen, he was succeeded by his son, Gaemon the Glorious, who, in keeping with the Valyrian tradition of incest, married his sister Daenys the Dreamer. Gaemon was succeeded by his son Aegon, who married his own sister Elena and produced two sons. The elder brother Maegon inherited the lordship and ruled for a time, before it passed to his younger brother Ares, and then his three sons, Aelix, Balon, and Damion. Damion was then succeeded by his son Arion, who married Valena Valerion and had three children, naming them Visenya, Aegon, and Rhaenys. Arion was then succeeded by Aegon, who married both of his sisters. Though the Targaryens brought five dragons from Valyria, four died in the ensuing years, and so Aegon took the last of them, known as Balerion the Black Dread as his own, while his sister wives took Vagar and Meraxis, two more recently hatched creatures born on Dragonstone. After a century of isolating themselves from the chaos in Essos, Aegon Targaryen at last decided to intervene, joining an alliance to stop Valentine expansion and doing his part by burning an enemy fleet sent against the city of Lys. With the Valentine Wars over, and the free cities left in relative peace, the ambitious Aegon Targaryen turned his attention west and began preparing for the invasion of Westeros. Despite his people's history in Essos, it was the western continent which called to Aegon, causing him to order the construction of an elaborately carved table with a detailed map of Westeros more than 50 feet long and 25 feet wide. Yet while Aegon considered the entire continent one territory for him to rule, Westeros at the time was separated into seven distinct realms, known as the Kingdom of the North, the Kingdom of Mountain and Vale, the Kingdom of the Isles and Rivers, the Kingdom of the Rock, the Kingdom of the Reach, the Kingdom of the Storm, and Dorne. Joined by his sister wives Rhaenys and Visenya, their dragons Balerion, Meraxis, and Vagar, and less than 3,000 soldiers from House Valerion, Celtigar, and Massey. The Targaryens began their invasion of Westeros in 2 BC, landing at the mouth of Blackwater Rush where they built the Aegon Fort. As they started to expand their territory, Rhaenys and Visenya placed a Valyrian steel circlet inlaid with rubies upon Aegon's head, crowning him King of Westeros. The first major conquest came when they defeated the Kingdom of Isles and Rivers, killing King Heron the Black and the last of House Hor in the burning of Heron Hall. The Riverlands were then given to House Tully, a noble family of ancient blood who sided with the Targaryens. Next fell the Kingdom of the Storm, when King Argelac Durandon was slain in a battlefield duel with Ori's Baratheon, the best friend and rumored bastard brother of Aegon Targaryen. 
made the new Lord of the Stormlands. Ori's embraced the Durandon legacy by marrying the deceased king's daughter, Argela, and adopting their sigil as well as their words to form House Baratheon. The Targaryens then conquered both the kingdoms of the Rock and Reach by defeating an army of 55,000 in the Field of Fire. After the battle, King Loren of House Lannister surrendered and was made Lord of the Westerlands, while King Myrne Gardner IX and his sons were killed in the fighting, leaving Aegon to name Harlan Tyrell as Lord of the Reach, the former steward of Highgarden, who was rewarded for surrendering the castle peacefully. Though the Northmen were ready to fight for their independence, raising an army of 30,000, King Torrin Stark knew they could not win, and so decided to save his people by bending the knee and surrendering his crown. Though Aegon named Torrin Stark as Lord of Winterfell and Warden of the North, he was forever remembered as the King Who Knelt. Rather than send an army to fight for the Kingdom of the Mountain and Vale, Visenya flew her dragon Vagar directly into the courtyard of the Eyrie. By the time Lady Shara Arryn arrived, she found her beloved son Ronald sitting upon Visenya's lap, eagerly wanting to fly on the dragon. Understanding the implicit threat, the Veil surrendered to the Targaryens, and after being flown around the mountain three times, Ronald Arryn was named Lord of the Veil vale and Warden of the East. Though they conquered nearly the entire continent, the Targaryens were unable to defeat Dorne, with the elderly Princess Maria Martell warning Rhaenys that you may burn us, my lady, but you will not bend us, break us, or make us bow. This is Dorne. You are not wanted here. Return at your peril. Despite this setback, Aegon was formally crowned King of Westeros by the High Septon in 1 AC, after which he went to the Iron Islands and had them name their new lord, choosing Vicon of House Greyjoy, an ancient noble family who once ruled as kings. With six of the seven kingdoms of Westeros under Targaryen rule, the City of King's Landing was established around the Aegon Fort, where they built the Iron Throne, a monstrous chair forged from the melted swords of defeated enemies. Yet it was not enough for Aegon, who wanted to complete his conquest, launching the First Dornish War in 4 AC. Yet rather than defending their lands by meeting the invaders in battle, the Dornish employed a more long-term strategy, withdrawing from nearly every engagement while abandoning towns and castles whenever an enemy army approached. As a result, the Targaryens quickly captured Sunspear and many other holdings, leading them to declare victory and start withdrawing troops. Yet once the main army was gone, the Dornish immediately began their counteroffensive, with Maria Martell re-emerging to take power in Sunspear. Having quickly lost control of Dorne, King Aegon mounted his dragon Balery on the Black Dread and flew south, burning a great number of castles in retaliation. Yet rather than instilling fear, it only escalated the conflict further. During a campaign to burn Starfall, Skyreach, and Hellholt, Queen Rhaenys and Meraxxus were brought down by Scorpion Fire, leaving Aegon so enraged he went on another rampage, burning nearly every Dornish stronghold he could find. With the war dragging on, several attempts were made on the life of King Aegon, leading Queen Visenya to form the Kingsguard in 10 AC, modeling their vows after those of the Night's Watch, preventing them from holding lands, titles, or being wed. The war continued on for three more years until the death of the elderly princess Maria Martell, when her son Prince Nymor sent a mysterious letter to Aegon in King's Landing. Although its contents remain unknown, Aegon burned the message after reading it, and the next morning withdrew his troops from Dorne. Despite the hostilities between their people, this peace lasted for the rest of Aegon's reign, and the king even remained on good terms with Prince Nymor's daughter, Daria Martell, visiting Sunspear in 23 AC, alongside his eldest son, Aenys, for what was called a Feast of Friendship. After the death of Aegon the Conqueror in 37 AC, the Iron Throne was inherited by his eldest son Aenys, son of Rhaenys, a good-hearted man seen as weak by many, lacking both the cunning of his father and ferocity of his younger brother Maegor, son of Visenya. While young, Aenys was weak and sickly, causing some to suggest he was not a true-born son of Aegon, as Rhaenys was known to surround herself with handsome young men she may have taken to bed. Yet those rumors largely ended when his dragon Quicksilver hatched, and as the creature grew, so did the boy. Yet even so, Aenys was never a great warrior, and so gifted his father's Valyrian steel sword Blackfire to his brother Maegor, who also took Balerion the Black Dread as his own. Unfortunately, the reign of Aenys Targaryen proved short and disastrous, beginning with four rebellions that emerged within the first year of his rule. In the Riverlands, Red Heron, the supposed grandson of Heron the Black, 
captured Harrenhal and killed its lord. While in the Vale, Janos Aaron rebelled against and eventually killed his brother Ronald, taking power in the Eyrie. Trouble also came to the Iron Islands, where a man gained a following by claiming he was the Priest King Lodos, who walked into the sea during the reign of Aegon I and now returned from his meeting with the Drowned God. In Dorne, a rebel called the Vulture King raised 30,000 warriors to attack the Targaryen Kingdom in retaliation for the destruction caused in the First Dornish War. Though the noble lords of Dorne, like Princess Daria Martell, claimed they were trying to stop the rebellion, many believed they were doing nothing, or else might even be supporting them. Meanwhile, in King's Landing, Aenys was utterly perplexed at what was happening, and sent letters to the rebels trying to discuss their grievances. But his uncertainty, indecision, and fear of violence only alienated him further from the nobility, who were then forced to deal with these rebellions on their own, with the crown playing a supporting role rather than leading the effort. In the Vale, Magor worked with House Royce to take back the Eyrie, while in the Iron Islands, House Greyjoy slaughtered Lodos and his people, leading the king to unwisely promise their lord any boon he desired. Goran Greyjoy then asked that the Faith of the Seven be expelled from the Iron Islands, to which the King was forced to agree. In Dorne, the Marcher Lords united to defeat the Vulture King, and in the Riverlands, Heron the Red killed the Hand of the King, Alan Stokeworth, only to die moments later, facing the Lord's Squire, Bernard Brune. With the rebellions defeated, Aenys Targaryen named his brother as Hand, and together they ruled well for two years, until yet another crisis arose, this time within their own family, as Maegor and his wife seemed unable to have children. Though Aenys and Alyssa Valerion had three sons and three daughters, Maegor remained childless and so took a second wife, creating outrage amongst the nobility, faith, and royal court. Refusing to give up his new bride, Magor was exiled from Westeros in 40 AC, going to live as an honored guest in Pentos. The following year, an even greater outrage swept across the continent, when the king married his eldest son Aegon to his eldest daughter Reyna, as was the custom among the families of Old Valyria. Yet while the High Septon and Faith of the Seven tolerated Aegon the Conqueror and his sister wives, they now demanded that House Targaryen abandon the practice of incest. Though normally indecisive, Aenys outright refused, and the marriage went on as planned. In response, the High Septon named him King Abomination and led a rebellion against the Crown known as the Faith Militant Uprising. Facing another rebellion, the King once again was unable to act forcefully or make a decision, and after a failed assassination attempt, Aenys retreated to Dragonstone, where his aunt Visenya advised him to respond with fire and blood, but still he refused. In 42 AC, after only five years of rule, Aenys grew ill and died at the age of 35, with some suggesting he was poisoned by Visenya, who afterwards flew to Pentos and brought back her son Magor, crowning him the new king of Westeros and challenging anyone to come dispute the claim. Though the crown should have passed to Aegon, the eldest son of Aenys, he and his sister wife were besieged by rebel forces, and so the only immediate challenge to Magor's authority came from the Faith Militants in King's Landing, as Sir Daemon Morrigan, Grand Captain of the Warrior's Sons, challenged him to a trial by seven. Since Magor had no warriors with him, he fought alongside six volunteers in a vicious battle that left everyone dead save for the king, who was so badly injured he fell into a coma for several weeks until he awoke, determined as ever to destroy his enemies. Among the many deeds which earned him the name Magor the Cruel, the king escalated the war with the faith, burning the Sept of Remembrance in the capital and mercilessly raining dragonfire upon them. After personally supervising the construction of the Red Keep to build a number of hidden passageways within the walls and underground, he had the builders executed so they could never reveal what they knew. When his nephew Aegon took the Dragon Quicksilver for his own, raised an army, and was crowned a rival king, they engaged in the battle beneath the god's eye. However, Quicksilver was no match for Balerion the Black Dread, resulting in the death of Aegon and defeat of his army. Back in the capital, Magor remained childless throughout his reign, leading him to take a total of six wives, including his niece, Reyna Targaryen, the widow of Aegon, who was forced to accept the marriage to protect her twin daughters, Arya and Rhaella. After the death of his mother Visenya in 44 AC, Magor grew ever more short-tempered and violent, so that by 48 AC, the lords of Westeros could no longer tolerate his oppressive rule, abandoning him to rally behind Jaehaerys Targaryen in the Stormlands, the last living son of Aenys and Alyssa, who was proclaimed the true king of Westeros. 
Since both Jaehaerys and his sister Alysan rode dragons, they flew to the capital with their army close behind, only to find Maegor dead, possibly from suicide, stabbing and cutting himself on the swords of his throne. With the king dead, Jaehaerys Targaryen came to power at the age of 14, with his mother Alyssa given the regency, while his greatest supporter Lord Rogar Baratheon served as Hand of the King. Determined to unify the realm, Jaehaerys earned the name the Conciliator by making peace with the High Septon and granting amnesty and pardons to those who served Maegor or the Faith Militants. Jaehaerys worked diligently to address the concerns of nobles and small folk, proving himself shrewd and highly capable. During a tournament to celebrate the golden wedding of the king's mother Alyssa and Rogar Baratheon in 49 AC, it was decided that the victors would be granted a place in the Kingsguard of Jaehaerys I, making it one of the most competitive tourneys in their history. Though hundreds of knights fought in the war for the White Cloaks, only five champions were named, each of whom felt a special loyalty to the king, as they earned their position through merit rather than noble birth. After the wedding, the small council began to make marriage plans for both Jaehaerys and his sister Alysan, fearing that if the decision was left to them, they would marry each other, thereby risking another religious rebellion, and so it was decided the princess would marry Sir Orin Baratheon, brother to the Hand of the King. However, when 13-year-old Alysan learned of this betrothal, she immediately informed Jaehaerys, and so began one of the most famous love stories in Westerosi history. Refusing to even consider marrying anyone else, Jaehaerys and Alysan left the Red Keep with their Kingsguard and went to Dragonstone, where they were wed in a secret ceremony. Furious to learn of their actions, Alyssa and Rogar gathered their warriors and sailed to Dragonstone to end the marriage before it could be consummated. However, Jaehaerys and Alysan refused to comply, and when soldiers were sent to physically take them, the loyal Kingsguard stood in their way, forming a wall to protect their young king and queen making it clear that if they tried to use force, Rogar Baratheon would be the first to die. Fearing the violence that might ensue, the king's mother convinced her husband to back down and return to King's Landing. Even so, Rogar would not accept the marriage, and made several attempts to undermine their relationship, even sending spies to try and seduce the king. But none of his plans succeeded, and soon even his wife turned against him, removing him as hand. Meanwhile, on Dragonstone, the young king and queen spent every available moment together, charming everyone with the happiness of their relationship. And while Jaehaerys impressed many with his intelligence, work ethic, and hard-earned skill as a warrior, so too did Alysan, who many claimed was just as sharp and talented as her husband, often sitting by his side in meetings and offering sage counsel. And so when Jaehaerys turned 16 and was given full control over the kingdom, he and his queen began a long and prosperous reign, considered by many to be the golden age of Targaryen rule. Ruling for over five decades, King Jaehaerys the Conciliator was considered by many to be the best king in the history of the realm, doing much to unify and strengthen their people. Among the many reforms enacted, his administration created a unified code of law for the Seven Kingdoms, negotiated to reduce their debt with Braavos, limited personal expenses, and raised taxes on the wealthy, investing this new income into infrastructure in the capital and beyond, building the dragon pit, fountains to provide clean water, drains, sewers, and a road system to connect the territories they controlled. Though a number of factors came into play which prevented another religious rebellion over the king's marriage to his sister, it was partly due to Jaehaerys sending a team of seven speakers across the continent to preach and popularize the doctrine of exceptionalism, which stated that while incest was wrong for most, the Targaryens were an exception because they could bond with dragons, and because their blood was of old Valyria, they cannot be judged by the customs of Andal culture. In addressing the succession, Jaehaerys named his niece Arya, the eldest child of his sister Reyna, as heir until his own children were born. The daughter of Aenys and widow of both Aegon and Maegor, Reyna had a difficult life until the ascension of King Jaehaerys, and so retired from court politics, settling on Fair Isle, where she was known as the Queen in the West. However, when her patron died and was replaced by a son who hated her, she was forced to leave and so was given Dragonstone by her brother, where she became known as the Queen in the East, living alongside her daughter Arya, while her other daughter Rayella joined the Faith and became a Septa in Old Town. 
in order to make their presence felt throughout the kingdom and learn more about their people. The king and queen went on a royal progress in 51 AC, flying their dragons to towns and castles large and small, holding court with both nobles and commoners. However, the journey was cut short when a group of septas attempted to assassinate the pregnant Queen Alisan in Maidenpool, believing she and her unborn child were incestuous abominations. As a result of this attack, they decided the queen needed a female guard who could accompany her anywhere, and so they sent for Jonquil Dark, a fighter who distinguished herself in the War for the White Cloaks years earlier. Unfortunately, this attack was followed by the premature birth of the king and queen's first child, Aegon, who died after only three days. Yet the following year, Alisan gave birth to their second child, Daenerys, who proved healthy and strong. Over the next three decades, the marriage between Jaehaerys and Alysanne was incredibly fruitful, having a total of 13 children, including Aemon, born in 55 AC, Balon in 57 AC, Alyssa in 60 AC, Miguel in 62 AC, Vagon in 63 AC, Daella in 64 AC, Sarah in 67 AC, Viserra in 71 AC, Gaemon in 73 AC, though he died after only three months, Valerion in 77 AC, who died after a year, and finally Gale, born frail and sickly in 80 AC. Though Jaehaerys Targaryen earned the respect and admiration of many, the family suffered a public humiliation in 54 AC when Alyssa Farman, the best friend and possible lover of Rhaena Targaryen, stole three dragon eggs from Dragonstone. Though she was never apprehended, stories say she sold them to the Sea Lord of Braavos and used the money to build a great ship she sailed under the name Alice Westhill, making a famous journey west across the Sunset Sea. This embarrassment then turned to horror when Alyssa's brother Andro, who was unhappily married to Reyna, poisoned a number of nobles on Dragonstone before taking his own life, having grown bitter and hateful after years of neglect and humiliation. Fortunately, some good news also came this year, as an ally of the crown was named the High Septon, allowing them to integrate the doctrine of exceptionalism into the faith's teachings. However, this victory was not enough to distract from the other tragedies of this year, as the Queen Mother Alyssa Valerion died in childbirth, and the young princess Arya Targaryen disappeared into the sky on the back of the dragon Valerion the Black Dread. Having hated her time on Dragonstone, Arya, daughter of Reyna, was desperate to claim a dragon and fly off to have an adventure, and so at the age of 12, she climbed atop the largest and most vicious of their dragons, and the creature took off into the air, disappearing without a trace. Though her mother and the king did all they could to find her, she was gone for over a year until 56 AC, when Balerion flew into the capital with the girl on its back. Yet there was no cause for celebration, as Arya's young body was horribly weak and ravaged by disease, with the girl only able to utter, I never, before she collapsed unconscious. Her condition and disfigurement was so severe and unknown to them, no one was allowed near her except Grand Maester Benefer and Septon Barth, who were both scarred for life by what they saw. Not only did her body seem to be cooking its own flesh, but there were horrible, worm-like creatures crawling around under her skin, which screamed when they dipped her body in cold water. Dying after several hours of excruciating pain, none could be sure what happened to her, though many believed Balerion took her to his original homeland of Valyria, which was now a smoking ruin, and where she must have contracted one or several terrible diseases. The following year in 57 AC, the king's friend and advisor Septon Barth was made Hand of the King, and in 58 AC, Jaehaerys negotiated peace between Pentos and Tyrosh, while his wife Alysanne visited the north. Throughout her journey, the queen charmed House Stark, arranged a new gift of land for the Night's Watch, and held another of her famous women's court, where ladies, rich and poor, who were unlikely to get an audience with the king, could petition the queen directly. It was in these meetings that she heard horror stories about the northern lords that kept the tradition of first night, which gave them the right to bed their female subjects on the first night of their marriage. In rage, she brought it up with Jaehaerys and convinced him to banish the practice, even though he was hesitant to anger the lords of the north. In 61 AC, Jaehaerys put down a Dornish rebellion under the second Vulture King and defeated them yet again in 83 AC by repelling an invasion of the Stormlands with only his sons and dragons, thereby not losing a single warrior in the engagement. 
ruling alongside his eldest sons. His heir, Aemon, was married to Jocelyn Baratheon, and together had a daughter, Rhaenys, while Balon married his sister Alyssa, who gave birth to Viserys, Daemon, and Aegon. However, not all of the king's children were thriving, and in 84 AC, scandal once again struck the capital when they learned Sarah Targaryen, one of the younger daughters, was intimate with three knights of the court, even involving her female friends in their intimacy, which left one of them pregnant. Not only did her actions spark outrage, but also her attempted defense, as she invoked the name of Maegor the Cruel, saying that if he could have multiple wives, she should be able to take multiple husbands. King Jaehaerys was enraged to learn of her dishonor, and had her confined to a tower while he dealt with the knights, forcing one to marry the girl who was not pregnant, and exiling another when he refused to marry the one who was. While the third man, who was the most brazen, was killed by the king himself in a trial by combat, with Sarah forced to watch from her prison. Declaring that she was no longer his daughter, the king sent her to become a septa in Old Town, but she eventually escaped and sailed to Lys where she became a prostitute. Despite her unfortunate circumstances, Sarah used her body to eventually become a woman of wealth and influence in Volantis, giving birth to a number of bastard children by various men. Meanwhile, back in the capital, the marriage of Jaehaerys and Alysanne suffered greatly after what happened with Sarah, as the king disinherited her, while the queen wanted to forgive and bring her back. Though they eventually reconciled, their relationship was never the same. As the years went on, the king lost many more loved ones, including Princess Daenerys who died in 59 AC, his heir Aemon in 92 AC, their youngest child Gael who committed suicide in 99 AC, Queen Alysanne in 100 AC, and the new heir Balon in 101 AC. After losing both the sons he groomed to be king, Jaehaerys called a great council where the lords of Westeros gathered to determine a new heir. While a great many candidates were presented, they ultimately went with Viserys, eldest son of Balon, the fourth-born child of the king, thereby passing over Rhaenys, daughter of Aemon, the third-born child, as well as her children, thereby establishing that the crown cannot pass to a woman or through a female line. After 55 years of rule, Jaehaerys the Conciliator died in 103 AC, leaving his grandson Viserys, a wealthy, peaceful, and prosperous realm, at the very height of its power. Presiding over a wealthy and thriving realm with an army of dragons at their command, House Targaryen reached the end of their golden age, beginning a slow decline towards their eventual fall. Yet while Viserys I was not as wise, cunning, or skilled at arms as Jaehaerys I, he was an amiable and good-natured ruler, well-loved by the people who relied on his advisors to govern, while he concerned himself chiefly with keeping the hard-won peace left to him by his grandfather. Unfortunately, he ultimately failed in this task, and left the realm torn in two on the brink of the worst civil war in their history. However, conflict stemmed not from his policies or administration, but from the issue of succession which arose after he married his cousin Aima Arryn, who produced two sons which both died in their infancy, and a girl named Rhaenyra who grew into a beautiful, fearsome, and proud Targaryen dragon rider. After the death of his wife in childbirth, Viserys feared his lack of a son might lead the people to rally behind his wild and volatile brother Daemon as heir. Believing he was unfit for the throne, Viserys decided to name his only living child, Rhaenyra, as heir to the Seven Kingdoms in 105 AC, with a great many lords and knights swearing their allegiance. Yet the notion of naming a daughter was controversial and set the stage for future conflict, as the Council of 101 AC, which chose Viserys over his aunt and cousins, stated that a woman cannot inherit the crown if an eligible male is available, in this case the king's younger brother, the rogue prince Daemon Targaryen. However, because of Daemon's brash nature, he had little support among the nobility, and so the true conflict came from the events of 106 AC, when Viserys took a second wife, marrying Alicent Tytower, who in their years together gave him three sons and a daughter, naming them Aegon, Helena, Aemon, and Daeron. The eldest child Aegon then married Helena, and produced Jahera, Jaehaerys, and Maelor. With a number of male sons and grandsons now available, some started to push for a new heir to be named, but Viserys refused, continuing to train his beloved daughter Rhaenyra to rule, marrying her to Laenor Valerion, with whom she had three children of her own, in Jaehaerys, Lucerys, and Joffrey. 
Though the king was clear on the succession, his wife Queen Alicent refused to accept it and constantly pushed for her son Aegon to be the heir. Helping her case was the controversy surrounding Rhaenyra's children as they all had brown hair and looked nothing like their supposed father Laenor, who was rumored to be gay, instead believed to be the bastard children of Sir Harwin Strong. With the tales about the princess spreading, many flocked to Queen Alicent and her green faction, but they were fiercely opposed by Rhaenyra and her black faction, who had allies of their own, supported by one of the richest and most powerful families in House Valerion, as well as the rogue prince Daemon Targaryen, a veteran fighter who reigned shortly as King of the Stepstones while living in exile from Westeros. A dragon rider and experienced commander, with many loyal soldiers at his call, Daemon Targaryen married his niece Princess Rhaenyra after the death of both their spouses, resulting in the birth of Aegon, Viserys, and Visenya. The king hated seeing his family divided and often tried to reconcile them, but the division only grew worse, with even the children getting involved, when Aemon Targaryen took the dragon Vagar without permission, leading to a confrontation with Rhaenyra's sons, where Lucerys slashed out his eye with a knife. Even the dragons were divided, snapping and hissing at each other after sensing the animosity of their riders. In the year 129 AC, Viserys I died in his sleep, having in many ways been an excellent king as he left the realm wealthy and prosperous. Yet no matter how many times he reiterated that Rhaenyra was his heir, his inability to prevent factionalism meant the issue of succession was never resolved. And so immediately following his death, the Greens of Queen Alicent Hightower made the first move, as they lived in King's Landing while Rhaenyra lived on Dragonstone. For seven days, the Greens kept the death of Viserys secret so they could remove and replace their enemies at court, until finally the King's Guard, Sir Criston Cole crowned Aegon II as King of the Seven Kingdoms, justifying their actions by claiming that the Council of 101 AC stated a woman could not inherit over a man, regardless of what the deceased ruler wanted. Over on Dragonstone, Rhaenyra was pregnant with her sixth child when she heard that her father was dead and younger brother usurped the throne. Sent into a terrible fury, she went into early labor and lost the child, only further enraging her against Aegon, Alicent, and their supporters. Gathering her allies, she was crowned the true queen of the Seven Kingdoms, and the two factions went to war. Yet this was no simple military conflict, as both sides possessed a great many dragons, which would devastate the land and people of the continent. Over the course of two years, Westeros descended into a chaotic frenzy of death and violence, with such notable events like the Pact of Ice and Fire, which created an alliance between the Blacks and House Stark, the Dance of Shipbreakers Bay, where the first battle between dragon riders resulted in the death of Lucerys and Arax, the retribution of Blood and Cheese, two lowborn killers who murdered young Jaehaerys in front of his mother Helena, the Rise of the Dragon Seeds, where anyone with traces of Valyrian blood could attempt to tame a dragon and join the Black Faction, the Raids of the Red Kraken who terrorized the western coast, the Battle Above the God's Eye, which left Daemon Targaryen, Aemon Targaryen, Vagar, and Caraxes all dead, the storming of the dragon pit and riot of King's Landing, which left many dragons and people dead, and the deaths of both Rhaenyra and Aegon II, leaving King's Landing temporarily without a Targaryen ruler, leading to the rise of three petty kings who were soon deposed. After the assassination of Aegon II at the hands of his own advisors, who wanted to prevent Craig and Stark from massacring everyone in retaliation for the death of his queen, Rhaenyra's eldest living son, Aegon III, was crowned King of Westeros. Furious that the Northmen were denied battle, Craig and Stark took charge of King's Landing in what was called the Hour of the Wolf, arresting those responsible for the assassination and stabilizing the city before he returned home to Winterfell with a new wife and the friendship of the Iron Throne. Yet Aegon III was only 11 at the time of his coronation, and so a council of regents ruled in his name. Men and women who for the most part were simply ambitious nobles, primarily concerned with plotting against each other for power. The king himself was good-natured, but quiet and sullen, deeply traumatized by the Dance of the Dragons, where he lost so many members of his family, including his mother, who was burned alive by dragonfire while he watched. As a result, Aegon had almost no influence in the administration of the realm, rarely saying or doing anything beyond what he was told. In the few instances where the boy did try to speak or offer suggestions, his power-hungry regents ignored and dismissed him, even taking Gaiman Palehair, Aegon's only friend, and whipping him whenever the king misbehaved. 
to help heal the realm after the civil war. Aegon III was married to his cousin Jehera Targaryen, last living child of Aegon II, but she was a simple girl who displayed little emotion and killed herself two years after their marriage, though some suspect she was murdered by the hand of the king, Lord Unwin Peak, as part of a plot to wed the king to his daughter, Muriel. Given his level of influence in the capital, Unwin Peak ensured Aegon spent a lot of time with his daughter, even while the other lords of the realm sent the young women of their houses to win his favor in the Maiden's Day Ball. The king, however, had no interest in any of it, and was so detached from what was happening around him, he most likely would have chosen Muriel simply because she was always near him, and it was what the Hand wanted. Yet at the last moment, the king was rescued from the situation through the interference of the only people in the entire world he trusted, and that was his half-sisters, Bela and Reyna, the daughters of Daemon Targaryen and his first wife, Lena Valerion. The two young dragon riders brought with them a sweet and beautiful six-year-old girl named Daenerys of House Valerion, presenting her to Aegon, who readily agreed to the match, thereby foiling the plot of House Peak. In 134 AC, Lord Alan Valerion returned from a trip overseas with a present for Aegon, bringing forth the king's younger brother Viserys, who everyone thought was killed in the Dance of the Dragons, but had actually been taken to Lys. Aegon was thrilled to have his brother back, and also accepted several members of House Rogare into the court, as Viserys was now married to Lara Rogare, the daughter of a wealthy banking family. Despite some things getting better for the young ruler, many more challenges awaited him, as his friend Gaiman Palehair soon died of poisoning in an attempted assassination of the king. Matters then grew worse when word reached the capital that House Rogare had fallen from grace in lease, leading their enemies in Westeros to start arresting them, even going after the wife of the prince Viserys. Outraged to learn that his counselors and regents were plotting against his own family, King Aegon's days of passivity and indifference were gone, and he retreated into Magor's holdfast alongside his wife, brother, sister-in-law, and a former pit-fighting champion in service to the Rogares, known as Sandok the Shadow. For 18 days, they were held in a secret siege, refusing to give up Lara Roger and making it clear that any man who tried to storm the tower would die. When an attempt to use violence was made, Sandok the Shadow massacred Sir Armory Peak and a dozen guardsmen. As time went on, some started to see that the king would not be moved, and further investigation revealed that the Rogares were being falsely accused of treason by a group of conspirators that included the Lord Confessor, George Graceford, and the King's Guard Mervyn Flowers. With the siege ended, new regents were named for the final year of the king's minority, and once again, Aegon seemed to retreat into the background. However, when at last his name day arrived in the year 136 AC, 16-year-old Aegon immediately took action, no longer willing to tolerate all those who disregarded and marginalized his wishes. And so the reign of Aegon the Broken King began, when he stormed into a meeting of the small council alongside his brother and dismissed all his regents and the hand of the king, cancelling any and all plans underway. Ruling for 26 years, King Aegon III presided over a dull and dreary court, unable to move past the traumas of his youth while facing the bitter challenge of reconciling the realm after a terrible civil war. Though the king was good-hearted and did his best to bring about peace and plenty, he remained quiet and brooding all his life, struggling to forge friendships or make alliances. Given his mistrust for noble lords and court advisors, Aegon relied on his brother Viserys for counsel, eventually making him Hand of the King. Together, the brothers put down the short-lived rebellions which arose in the aftermath of the Dance of the Dragons, including some led by men claiming to be Daron Targaryen, the youngest son of Viserys I and a cousin to the king. They made this claim because the boy's body was never identified after supposedly dying in the war. But these rebels were soon proven to be imposters, and their followers were defeated. Uncomfortable with intimacy or being touched, it took Aegon many years to warm to his wife Daenerys Valerion, but eventually they grew closer and had a fruitful marriage, producing five children, starting with the heir and Prince of Dragonstone, Darren Targaryen, then followed by his siblings, Rhaena, Elena, Baylor, and Dana. Though Aegon largely succeeded in bringing stability and peace to the Seven Kingdoms, his reign was remembered as a failure, due in part to the fate of the dragons, which went extinct in the years after the war, with so many of them killed in the fighting, and the few that remained, producing eggs which did not hatch, or else birthed small, sickly, and misshapen creatures, which did not long survive. 
The king, who lost his own dragon, Stormcloud, during the dance, was no longer interested in them, but knew he must try to hatch more eggs for the sake of his house, and so made many attempts to bring them back into the world, even sending for mages from Essos to perform magic rituals. But all these attempts ended in failure, and so Aegon III became known as the Dragonbane. Following the death of the king from consumption at the age of 36 in 157 AC, his son and heir, Darren I, sat the throne. Yet where his father was quiet and thoughtful, Darren was boisterous and proud, coming into his crown at the age of 14, but acting so confident and mature, he took power immediately and no regency was needed. Choosing to keep his uncle Viserys as Hand of the King, Darren was a warrior at heart, determined to complete the conquest of his ancestor Aegon I by invading Dorne and at last bringing them into the Seven Kingdoms. When his counselors objected to the idea, noting that the Targaryens no longer had dragons, the king replied, You have a dragon, he stands before you. Proving a cunning strategist and fearless warrior, Darren led his army in a great invasion of the Southern Realm, and while estimates claim the Targaryen army lost roughly 10,000 men, they succeeded in defeating the nobles of Dorne, with even House Martell surrendering in 158 AC. Documenting the campaign in a book titled The Conquest of Dorne, Darren's monumental victory brought him fame and prestige, leading many to name him the Young Dragon. However, the celebration proved premature, as it was not just the nobility of Dorne which valued their independence, but also the common people, and so when the lords of the realm surrendered, their subjects took up the cause, forming militias and rebel groups that launched a devastating guerrilla war against the invaders. Estimates claim the royal army lost 50,000 more men during their occupation of Dorne, leaving Darren to return in 160 AC in the hopes of ending the rebellion. But just one year later, the king was lured into a trap under the guise of peace talks, and was assassinated by Dornish forces, while his cousin Aemon the Dragon Knight was taken prisoner. With the armies devastated, and House Martell once again ruling from Sunspear, the invasion ended in a colossal failure, yet many lords of Westeros wished to continue on, as they sought vengeance for their loved ones who perished in the fighting. However, their warrior king, Darren I, was dead at the age of 18, having fathered no children, and so was succeeded by his religious brother, Baylor the Blessed, a man so committed to the faith of the Seven, he refused to consummate his marriage to his sister, Dana Targaryen. Wishing to bring about peace, Baylor decided to humble himself before the Southerners, walking barefoot and in rags to Sunspear, where he returned the hostages taken during the war. His obvious sincerity won respect from the Prince of Dorne, and so Baylor succeeded in negotiating a peace treaty, signing a marriage pact, and even ensured the release of his cousin Aemon from captivity. Yet when Baylor arrived to retrieve the Dragon Knight, House Will made him walk through a pit of vipers to free the man, resulting in a great many snake bites that nearly claimed the life of the king. Once returned to the capital, Baylor showed little interest in the administration of the realm, leaving the task to his small council and hand of the king Viserys Targaryen, who once again retained his position. Yet while he cared nothing for the mechanism of government, he delighted in emptying the treasury by starting construction of the Great Sept and through his charitable actions, providing food and resources to the people of King's Landing, thereby winning him the love of the small folk. Yet he also gained a great many enemies when he made prostitution illegal and expelled sex workers from the city. His own marriage to Dana was dissolved by the High Septon, and in order to preserve the innocence of his sisters, he locked all three of them away in the Maiden Vault so they might not tempt or be tempted by the outside world. As the years went on, he led efforts to burn books of ill repute and appointed an illiterate stonemason as High Septon. When that man died of fever, the king replaced him with an eight-year-old boy rumored to perform miracles. In the year 171 AC, after fasting for 40 days, Baylor I collapsed and died, with many believing he fell due to starvation, while others suggest he was poisoned by his uncle Viserys in order to prevent the king from enacting a plan to convert the entire continent to the faith of the Seven, which would result in war with the North and Iron Islands. Having died without children, Baylor was succeeded by his uncle, who became King Viserys II at the age of 49, bringing with him decades of experience in government, having served as hand under the last three rulers. 
And while the Saris reigned briefly, he reformed their code of law, established a new royal mint, increased trade with foreign lands, and kept the realm at peace. Though many claim he had the potential to be another Jaehaerys Targaryen, he died in 172 AC, only a year into his reign, possibly from illness, though some have suggested he was poisoned to death by his son and heir, King Aegon IV, also known as Aegon the Unworthy, believed to be the worst ruler in their history. Uninterested in the governing of his realm, Aegon spent his time indulging in women, wine, and food, becoming famed for his gluttony and dishonorable behavior. Married to his slender and pious sister, Nerys, Aegon was a cruel and callous husband who made no attempt to hide his infidelity, fathering many bastard children on women all across the continent. A man of extreme emotions, he was ruthless towards his enemies and overly generous with his friends, emptying the treasury to pay for extravagant gifts and parties, even giving away a dragon egg to Lord Butterwell after impregnating all three of his maiden daughters. Having served in the war against Dorne, Aegon IV had a deep hatred for the southern realm and planned two separate invasions. But his incompetence and poor planning led both expeditions to fail before they even reached Dorne. In addition to the numerous terrible decisions made by the king, his legacy of pain and violence sprang primarily from the numerous children he had, of which only two, Darren and Daenerys, were legitimate, while the others were bastards, including a number born of noble ladies, who served as his mistresses, with their offspring coming to be known as the Great Bastards. Having terrorized his wife for years, the king's brother Aemon the Dragon Knight was a constant thorn in his side, chastising him for his abusive behavior. In their youth, Aemon and Nerys were close and wanted to be with each other, but they were torn apart when she was forced to wed Aegon. Yet his love for Nerys never lessened, and so Aemon defended her honor whenever he could, even fighting a duel to the death with a man who accused the queen of infidelity. Aegon in turn hated both his brother and wife, and did not mourn when Nerys died in childbirth, and Aemon lost his life defending the king from an assassination attempt. Despite living a life of greed and excess, it was the final days of Aegon IV's reign which caused the most damage to the realm, as he decreed from his deathbed that all his bastard children be legitimized, thereby sowing the seeds of civil war, as there would inevitably be a confrontation over the succession. After his death in 184 AC, Darren II inherited the throne, the firstborn son of Aegon IV and his lawful wife Nerys. And while Darren proved a wise, intelligent, and progressive ruler, he was also a man of peace, more comfortable around maesters and scholars than warriors. As a result, Darren II focused his efforts on forming a marriage alliance with Dorne in order to peacefully bring them into the realm. Having already married a Dornish woman, he agreed for his sister Daenerys to marry the Prince of Dorne, Meryn Martell, and at last, the Seven Kingdoms were united. But many in Westeros were outraged, having no interest in peace, and instead wanting retribution against the South for all those who died in the last Dornish War. Furthermore, controversy surrounded the rule of Darren II, as some rumors suggested Nerys was unfaithful to Aegon IV, and so the legitimacy of the king was uncertain. All this and more led many to the banner of Darren's bastard half-brother, Daemon Waters, now known as Daemon Blackfire, the son of Aegon IV and Dana the Defiant Targaryen. A charming, charismatic, honorable, and valiant warrior, Daemon was beloved by friends and respected by enemies, earning his knighthood at the age of 12 after achieving victory in a squire's tourney, impressing his father so much he was gifted the Valyrian steel sword Blackfire, said to be the weapon of the king. Seen by many as the chosen heir, he was called the king who bore the sword, and gained many supporters, with the most fervent being his half-brother Aegor Rivers, another of the Great Bastards, who had a deep personal hatred for their sibling Brynden Rivers, who sided with King Darren. By 196 AC, the conflict at last erupted into the first Blackfyre Rebellion, culminating at the Battle of the Redgrass Field, where Daemon Blackfyre famously defeated Sir Gwain Corbray after an hour-long duel. Due to the king's sense of honor, he could not allow such a worthy foe to pass away, and so ordered that his opponent be taken off the battlefield and his wounds treated. However, this act of chivalry proved his downfall, as it gave time for the Archer Company of Brynden Rivers to rain fire arrows upon them, killing Daemon Blackfire as well as his eldest sons, Aegon and Aemon. 
rallying the remnants of the Blackfire army. Agor Rivers, also known as Bittersteel, stabbed Brynden Rivers through the eye before leading a retreat to seek refuge in Essos. Though over 10,000 men died in the battle, Theron proved victorious. But even so, Aegor Rivers refused to admit defeat, and so spent his years in exile preparing for another invasion, settling House Blackfire in Tyrosh, and founding the Golden Company, a mercenary group which earned a reputation for having thousands of well-trained, disciplined soldiers who never broke a contract. Despite the challenges of fighting a civil war and the aftermath of reconciling a divided continent, Darren the Good was able to bring forth many years of peace and plenty, ensuring the succession with his children Baylor, Eris, Rhaegel, and Makar. Unfortunately, his son and heir, Baylor Breakspear, was killed participating in a trial by seven, fighting on behalf of Sir Duncan the Tall, a man who would later become a famous knight and mentor of Darren's youngest grandson, Aegon Targaryen. And so when Darren II died during the Great Spring Sickness of 209 AC, alongside his grandsons Valar and Materis, his second son, Aerys I, inherited the crown. Ruling for 12 years, Aerys I was a bookish and scholarly monarch who spent his days studying ancient scrolls, leaving the realm to be governed by his uncle Brynden Rivers, named Hand of the King. Even his wife Eleanor Penrose was of no interest to him, with some claiming they never consummated the marriage. Believing that perhaps he simply disliked her, his advisors urged him to put aside the marriage and choose another wife, but he refused, staying true to the woman he continued to ignore. In the year 212 AC, violence erupted when Lord Dagon Greyjoy started raiding the western coast, while in the Riverlands, House Peak conspired with Daemon Blackfire II to gather support for the Second Blackfire Rebellion, but their efforts were thwarted by the Hedge Knight Sir Duncan the Tall and his squire Egg, also known as Aegon Targaryen, nephew to the king. For reasons not yet known, Egor Rivers and his warriors did not join the Second Blackfire Rebellion, instead focusing their attention on preparing Daemon's younger brother, Hagon, for the crown. Several years later, in 219 AC, Bittersteel felt the time was right and launched the Third Blackfire Rebellion, invading Westeros with the Golden Company. Though the king was not a warrior, his brother Prince Makar and nephews Arion Brightflame and Aegon Targaryen led their forces alongside the hand of the king Brynden Rivers, who once again fought a duel with his hated half-brother. Though the fighting was savage, in the end the loyalist forces were victorious, resulting in the death of Hagon Blackfire, who was dishonorably killed after surrendering, and the arrest of Aegor Rivers, who was dragged before the king in the capital. Both Bloodraven and Brightflame advocated for his execution, but Eris chose to be merciful and exiled him to the Night's Watch. Yet the Golden Company remained free and loyal to Bittersteel, and so they attacked the ship carrying their leader to the Wall and brought him back to Tyrosh, where he crowned Hagon's son, Daemon Blackfire III, as the true king of Westeros. Since King Eris had no children of his own, his brother Rhaegel was named heir until his death in 215 AC when he choked on Lamprey Pie. Rhaegel's son Elor was next in line, but he died in an accident involving his sister wife Elora, who was so distraught by the loss she went mad and later killed herself. And so when the king died of illness in 221 AC, the throne passed to his youngest brother Makar, a strong-willed warrior who kept Bloodraven as Hand of the King. Married to Diana Dane, the couple had four sons, yet even so the succession proved problematic, with the eldest child, Darren the Drunken, dying of the pox contracted from a prostitute, while Arion Brightflame was so mad, he died drinking wildfire. Their third son, Aemon, was both wise and good-hearted, but he became a maester and thus renounced his inheritance, leaving only Aegon Targaryen, the fourth son of a fourth son, known as the boy Egg, who squired for Sir Duncan the Tall. Despite being a warrior, Makar ruled for 12 years in relative peace, until House Peak rebelled in 233 AC. Having supported House Blackfire, they were stripped of lands and incomes, leading them to take up arms in the Peak Uprising, which ended in the storming of Starpike. Ever the warrior, Makar led the royal forces to victory, but died in the fighting, leaving the throne to his youngest son, Aegon V, 
known as the Unlikely, a man with a unique history unlike any other member of House Targaryen, beginning his adventures at the age of 9 when he attended the tourney of Ashford Meadow in 209 AC, and there deceived Sir Duncan the Tall into believing he was a common boy in order to serve as the knight's squire. However, the ruse was soon revealed when Sir Duncan defended the honor of Tanzel Tutal, who was being harassed by Aegon's elder brother, Arion Brightflame. The confrontation then led to a trial by seven, where each man gathered six allies to join him in battle. Though Arion's father Makar and brother Darren fought for him, the heir to the throne Baylor Breakspear saw the injustice of the situation and joined Sir Duncan the Tall, helping him achieve victory. Unfortunately, Prince Baylor died from the wounds he suffered at the hands of his brother Makar, but even so, Sir Duncan was allowed to keep Aegon as his squire, on the condition he continued to shave his head and hide his true identity. By serving under a hedge knight, Aegon traveled across the continent and lived amongst the small folk, coming to understand the poverty and challenges they endured. In time, he became an expert warrior and king, but he never forgot the lessons of his youth and spent his reign fighting for the rights of the common people. Yet these efforts, which made him beloved by the poor, led to anger and hatred from the nobility, who felt he threatened their authority. Yet if any wished to do him harm, they would need to go through Sir Duncan the Tall, who was made Lord Commander of the King's Guard, remaining a close friend and advisor to the ruler for the rest of their lives. Becoming king at the age of 33, Aegon's reign showed much promise, yet it unfortunately began with a scandal, as his first action was to banish the former Hand of the King, Brynden Rivers, to the Night's Watch. Due to the death of so many heirs under Makar I, a great council was called to determine the next king, which ultimately chose Aegon the Unlikely. However, one of the claimants who asked for an audience was Aenys Blackfire, the last living son of Daemon Blackfire, who wanted to take a peaceful approach to winning the Iron Throne. Though he was promised safe passage, Bloodraven broke his word and had the man killed, much to the relief of many noble lords. Yet this action also meant that the Iron Throne could not be trusted, and so the new king, Aegon V, had no choice but to exile his great uncle. Three years later, in 236 AC, Aegor Rivers made his last attempt to invade Westeros, landing on Massey's Hook with Daemon Blackfire III and the Golden Company. However, the fourth Blackfire Rebellion ended quickly with their defeat at the Battle of Wendwater Bridge, where Sir Duncan the Tall slew Daemon Blackfire in single combat, though Bittersteel once again survived and retreated across the Narrow Sea. Aegor Rivers then died a few years later, fighting in the disputed lands, but even on his deathbed refused to give up, ordering that the Golden Company boil the flesh from his skull, dip it in gold, and carry it as their banner when they finally take the Iron Throne. Back in the capital, despite proving himself a good man and valiant warrior, Aegon faced heavy backlash from the nobility who opposed his many reforms. Having married Betha Blackwood, who gave him five children, Aegon decided to marry their sons and daughters to important families throughout the realm, thereby winning him key allies in his fight for the common people. Yet all his plans were ruined when his children refused to cooperate, and in the end, his problems only grew worse. His eldest son, Duncan the Small, abandoned his betrothal to House Baratheon, and even renounced his position as heir to the throne, in order to marry the common girl, Jenny of Oldstones, an act so insulting it led the Stormlands into rebellion. Aegon's second son, Jaehaerys, and daughter, Shera, inspired by their elder brother's courage, left behind their arranged marriages to House Tully and Tyrell, so they might wed each other in a secret ceremony. Even the youngest son, Darren, disobeyed his father's wishes, forsaking his betrothal to House Redwine to remain unwed for the rest of his life, as he preferred the companionship of a man. Only the youngest child, Rael, did as she was told, marrying into House Baratheon to help bring peace after the rebellion. After 26 years of rule, Aegon V traveled to Summerhall in 259 AC, hoping to perform a ritual which might hatch dragon eggs, but instead created a fire so devastating it destroyed the castle and killed the king, Prince Duncan the Small, Sir Duncan the Tall, and many others. Fortunately, some few survived, possibly due to the heroics of the Lord Commander, including Rhaella, granddaughter of the king, and her son Rhaegar, born that very day. With the king dead, his son and heir Jaehaerys II inherited the throne, and while he was physically weak and sickly, he ruled well and was thought to be a good leader. 
Having married his sister Shara, they had a son named Eris and a daughter Rayella, wedding them to each other because of a prophecy proclaimed by a woods witch who said the prince who was promised would be born of their line. Though Jaehaerys II reigned for only three years, he faced a potential invasion in 260 AC when a group of pirates and merchants allied with Meili's the monstrous Blackfire, leader of the Golden Company. Basing themselves on the Stepstones, the hand of the King Ormond Baratheon led a preemptive strike, leading to the Fifth Blackfire Rebellion, which saw a young Barristan Selmy cut a bloody path through the enemy to slay Meili's in single combat, thereby ending the male line of House Blackfire. Dying of a sudden illness in 262 AC, the throne passed to the king's only son, Aerys II, a young man who showed promise in his early days, naming his friend Tywin Lannister as Hand of the King, and together brought about 12 years of peace and prosperity for the Seven Kingdoms. Yet as time passed, it became clear Aerys was a fool, always making grand plans he was unable to complete. These failures were then amplified by the respect everyone had for Tywin Lannister, leading him to resent the Hand, treating him with cruelty and disdain, until he felt no choice but to resign his position. With the king's mental health already starting to decline, he went through terrible bouts of depression when his wife had a number of stillbirths and miscarriages. As his insanity grew, he became obsessed with wildfire and burning his enemies alive, befriending pyromancers and filling his court with men of the alchemist's skill. Unfortunately, his sister wife suffered more than anyone and was regularly raped, beaten, and emotionally abused. Yet in spite of the Mad King's many mistakes, it was his son Rhaegar who lit the spark which doomed their house when he became champion at the tourney of Harrenhal in 281 AC, only to name Lord Robert Baratheon's betrothed Lyanna Stark as the Queen of Love and Beauty, ignoring his own wife Elia Martell, thereby publicly insulting House Baratheon, Stark, and Martell in a single action. Rhaegar and Lyanna later disappeared together, leaving most to believe she was kidnapped and being raped in the South. Outraged by her disappearance, Lyanna's brother, Brandon Stark, rode to King's Landing demanding justice, but instead the Mad King ordered that both he and his father be tortured and killed. In response, Houses Baratheon, Stark, Aaron, and later Tully rose in rebellion, culminating in the Battle of the Trident, where Robert Baratheon slew Rhaegar Targaryen in single combat. With rebel victory all but assured, House Lannister sacked King's Landing, killing King Aerys, Elia Martell, and her children Rhaenys and Aegon, allowing for Robert Baratheon to take the Iron Throne, claiming legitimacy through his grandmother Rael Targaryen. Meanwhile, the Mad King's wife Rhaella was on Dragonstone, where she died giving birth to their daughter Daenerys, who was taken to Essos by the loyalist Sir Willem Derry, alongside her brother Viserys, the boy who would spend the rest of his life trying to gather support to reclaim the throne of their father. Though the Beggar King died without accomplishment in a confrontation with the Dothraki, by 300 AC, his sister Daenerys, the last known Targaryen, hatched three dragons and began a campaign of conquest in Slaver's Bay to become Queen of Meereen, all the while waiting for the day she would take her army and dragons to Westeros. Yet as she waged war in the east, another possible Targaryen emerged with a young man claiming to be Aegon, son of Rhaegar, who was smuggled away as a baby and therefore survived the sack of King's Landing. A good-hearted warrior with the loyalty of the Golden Company, Aegon invaded the Stormlands during the reign of Tommen Baratheon, the boy king engulfed in a terrible civil war. Yet there are some who say Aegon is actually a Blackfire, descended from the female line, who was told he was a Targaryen to give him legitimacy. Love Game of Thrones? Then be sure to check out the new book, The Thrones Effect, written by a number of respected A Song of Ice and Fire YouTubers, including GOT Academy, Because Geek, Secrets of the Citadel, Grey Area, Ideas of Ice and Fire, History of Westeros, and Smokescreen, with Chapter 5, titled Eye of the Beholder, written by Civilization X, exploring the various ways the characters and story can be interpreted, as well as how the audience reacted to their decisions. If interested, click on the link in the description box below, where The Thrones Effect is available as a physical copy, ebook, and audiobook. A special thanks to all those who contribute to Civilization X, like Sir Jeremiah Ironside of House Comcia, the book nerd Lady J, Jack the Lionheart, and Shane R. Targaryen of the Citadel. If you'd like to help Civilization X, click on the Patreon link, and please be sure to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications to see more.